we're going to have a look at two different players playing Tiny and compare and contrast their differences. These matches do play out somewhat similar, yet there's a lot of different decisions made between the players and their playstyle, their items and so forth. So straight off the bat, this Tiny decided to go mid. He ended up getting two tangles from his allies and he trades a good bear for Ras. He also uses his mana from the avalanche to go and get some like mana to damage pretty much rather than just sitting in lane with maximum mana. He also buys a salve here and you end up seeing that there's a lot of trading going back and forth. Now in this lane, it's relatively hard for for him to kind of get any kill potential because of the fact that Void Spirit's second spell allows him to dodge and he has this skilled as well but he hasn't used it or revealed that he has it skilled yet so the tiny just wants to keep harassing back and forth and he's even bought three more tangos as well as this salve so it's a pretty high harass lane and there's going to be a lot of contesting in it it's definitely not passive Tiny is getting harassed down a lot. He still has his soul ring available and a lot of regen to back up with the soul ring. So now Void Spirit is coming to dive. Tiny is kind of baiting him here. But Void Spirit can dodge the damage from the toss using his second spell. And Tiny is coming up high ground to toss a tree. Uh, but the fairy fire comes out on Void Spirit. So Void Spirit gets away from that, no problem. So Tiny continues to play aggressive and try and do harass at any point that he gets. Even though he's not able to kill Void Spirit, he'll continuously just keep using the mana, make it hard for Void Spirit to constantly stay in lane. And this is kind of an advantage and disadvantage. His Bort's Tiny has kind of Rubik and Skyrat that can rotate and potentially get some kill. They don't end up getting any kills, but what you end up seeing is that Tiny ends up buying a salve here and flies it out to him again here at 7 minutes. But as you can see, Tiny is standing on the high ground, and before he walks down onto the high ground, Void Spirit jumps up on top of him. The reason why Void Spirit knew where he was is because Void Spirit actually has a ward across the river on top of the stairs. So Tiny did not end up seeing this ward, and Void Spirit continues to get this vision there for pretty much the next like seven or eight minutes, whatever the ward lasts, because it was only placed there recently. And Tiny, even with the Quelling Blade, he can buy the Sentry Ward at any point. So there's no point of like not dewarding. So it was obvious that he doesn't under like realize that there was an Observer Ward up there. Void Spirit gets a really nice rune steal here, but it's the fact that Tiny is contesting him, forcing him to use up all his mana just to be able to get something like a rune. So the other tiny player went safe lane and he got six tangos. He's also got a quelling blade and he ends up going buckler pretty early on. This is the reason for the ring of protection. So in this lane, he ends up getting relatively more harassed, mainly from this witch doctor from his maledict. However, you'll end up seeing that this tiny does not want to play aggressive whatsoever. He backs off here. Now, if he went playing aggressive there, he could have potentially killed this witch doctor. Maybe even got first blood there just before the enemy slark got first blood. So Wyvern starts harassing here and Tiny's not necessarily following up. There isn't really kill potential at this point. But now because the Night Stalker and Witch Doctor have gone aggro onto Wyvern, this opens up the opportunity where they can go aggressive onto this. Tiny walks out of the way there just so that he doesn't get the cask bounce to go onto him. So this way that he can follow up here. He even uses the tree throw to ensure that he gets the last instance of damage out onto this Witch Doctor. Even though he's playing relatively passive in this lane, you end up seeing that he did get a kill, unlike that of the mid lane Tiny player. So now that it's turned to night time, and T Night Stalker starts to get much stronger in lane, Tiny TPs back to base. Now, one little mistake that this Tiny ends up making is that he's carrying his tree, which ends up giving him minus 25 movement speed, and he ends up walking all the way back to lane. So if we have a look at him here, you end up seeing that this is a very common mistake because people do not see this in the tooltip. The tooltip actually changes when you throw the tree away. Now, instead of buying salves, he has bought tangos in lane. It hasn't worked out to be enough, but Shadow Fiend does come for this 8 minute gank with an invis rune. And Shadow Fiend's coming here, gets a nice ult, and the avalanche in on top of it kind of ends up working out there. Tiny did not spoil that gank or scare him off. So now Tiny's getting focused again. They have no stun on the enemy team, so he teleports back to the fountain. Now, for a second time, he walks back to his lane with the tree in hand, minus 25 movement speed. He literally gets a free windlace if he just threw the tree away and he can pick it up. And because he's maxing the tree, it has a really low cooldown. And what's so ironic about this is when he comes back to lane, watch what he does with the tree. He tosses it. Now it has the cooldown. So you can see the tooltip now it tells you about like what it actually does when you throw it away. 
So now it's 9 minutes and we have a third salve coming out. So there's a lot of regen being utilized in this lane. And if you think about it, if you decided to go bottle, it would end up being much more expensive. And because Void Spirit has this very strong strength of going for the runes and being able to essentially taunt the tiny, he can't actually get the runes reliably either. So now he waits around for the 10 minute rune. This is his first rotation he's doing. So this is roughly around the time that a lot of players do their rotation because of the outpost. And he decides to teleport bottom, which was a really good decision, gets a kill here. But now what ends up happening is that he commits a little bit too far. The Warlock gets his ulti off. And we do have Tomes coming in at this point as well. So you do need to realize the supports will be able to get their ultis at this point. And Tiny ends up dying, unfortunately, because of that. So now coming up to 14 minutes, we have Tiny taking down the first tier 1 tower of the game. And they go for a smoke straight off of this. Now Tiny's just after getting his Shadow Blade here. So this ends up being their first real team fight that's going on. And the enemy end up kind of knowing that there's something going on, I think, at this point. Because they just moved away here. Tiny ends up getting focused first and Drow uses the silence on him. But the enemy are very quick to respond here. And Lifestealer is currently jungling, so this is a 4v5 fight, and it ends up turning out pretty awful. In the current meta with the way that so much people are rotating, this was pretty much a bad smoke gank more than anything. You really don't want to take fights near the building. Now what's also quite interesting is this item choice of going Shadow Blade. It ends up giving you attack speed and attack damage, which is pretty good for Tiny and kind of like okay with farming. But you'll end up seeing how is he going to utilize this. Straight away he goes bottom at 16 minutes here, 15, and decides to go and try and gank this Lina. But what ends up happening here is that Void Spirit catches him and was waiting in the trees. We also have Warlock there as well, He's holding it out in the trees. And Tiny ends up getting focused, trying to go for a solo gank. And that was just Tiny on himself, no one with him on his team. And this really just doesn't work that easily right now anymore. Even Shadow Blade got buffed. The reason why Shadow Blade is just not as good as it used to be is because supports have more gold. It's much more easier to get these sentry wards as well. Regardless of what items you end up buying, it ends up being more important about how you utilize those items. So you end up seeing that this Tiny is using his Shadow Blade pretty much to farm all of the time. It was 14 minutes when he got the Shadow Blade first and he did not get a kill with it. He instead decides to jungle until roughly around 19 minutes. He doesn't get any kills unfortunately and the reason why they're waiting this long before they're going for a fight is because Axe was waiting for his Blink Dagger to farm it up. This is Axe now going for a rotation. If you have a look where Axe is, Axe is infested here and Tiny is nowhere to be seen nearby. Axe blinks in very early here and Tiny meanwhile is down near the tier one and mid lane. So this is not a great position to be. As you see, Tiny ends up catching up to this fight, but it ends up being a little bit later and Tiny uses his avalanche, then he gets stunned here and he's just waiting. He doesn't really get an avalanche toss combo so you end up seeing that he doesn't really burst anyone down that easily and his impact in this fight was relatively mediocre it could have been a little bit better if you were trying to like constantly improve on part of what this tiny has but it's really obvious that this shadow blade hasn't really been working out as well as he initially thought a lot of people end up going mask of madness instead especially if you're farming a lot around this witch doctor he knows that he's relatively alone maybe maybe there's someone gonna rotate but he ends up tossing to cancel his tp now using toss there uses less mana but the advantage of keeping avalanche available still is that if there's some sort of counter rotation that tiny doesn't know that's going to happen like a bait that witch doctor is doing he can use avalanche to stop that the other thing is that if witch doctor does end up using his ultimate that avalanche is a good way to cancel witch doctor's ulti as well rather than just having to use toss because avalanche has a further range cast range than toss and he's going orientated with farming like this. And this is a really good way of playing Tiny. A lot of people are doing it where you go Mask of Madness as one of your very early items. And the reason why people get this buckler is because it advances into the AC. The previous Tiny, as we saw with Tiny A, he doesn't want to go buckler early on for whatever reason. Even though he builds into AC afterwards and actually ends up rushing it as well. 
Now Tiny has spent pretty much the past 3 or 4 minutes with his Mask of Madness farming the jungle rotating around it and he takes this tower as a result of his allies winning a fight. Now he has committed a little bit too long for this tower but he doesn't want to let it get denied here either. So he ends up going in here onto Witch Doctor. He could have just ran away there but he ends up getting baited in here and ends up dying pretty soon afterwards. Not too much of a big deal. It is 400 gold but it's not going to lose the game for him if you want to put it that way. Now coming up to 17 minutes, Tiny is going to end up joining his very first team fight. And the previous Tiny was doing this at 19 minutes. And as you'll end up seeing that this fight is pretty bad organized for the enemy team. And if you have a think about, like if you had Shadow Blade during this time, would it really turn out to be anything better than what this Tiny is currently able to do with a Mask of Madness? These tosses end up being somewhat more impressive in comparison to what the previous Tiny did pretty much all game. So his base skill set of how he's using toss is much better than what the previous tiny was as well and you end up even getting a kill here combining with your allies and using your baseline skills and knowing how your allies skills work with you like you see the cookie there those really play out to be a little bit important as well not just having lots of items so Tiny ends up taking Ancient Stacks, his support stacked for him, and that's nice little efficiency there. It doesn't really play out to seem like too much, but you end up seeing how he goes pushing really aggressive here on his own, and the enemy are going on him, and he almost ends up dying here, but manages just about to escape here by the time his team get to him. So Slark is still chasing after him pretty hard here, and Slark ends up getting doomed, and Tiny just about survives, and this uh, buckler probably paid off in the Sanjin Yasha. So based off that now Tiny ends up taking the outpost and he goes and takes another ancient stack that he stacks himself here now. So this ends up being really like pretty much accelerating his farm during this period in the game. So at 20 minutes look at his last hits he's almost catching up the Shadow Fiend which is one of the fastest farming heroes in the game in terms of last hits. So this is something that happens every now and again where Tiny walks up high ground and he ends up being caught by a sentry ward on the enemy team and it doesn't lead into any kills. This is also kind of a disadvantage again of the Shadow Blade against good support players. Now if you think about Blink Dagger as an alternative, generally what I've been seeing by looking at a lot of tiny replays is that people do not buy Blink Dagger unless there is a hero that they can burst down on the enemy team that's worth something. So it's not that great to burst down Warlock but if there was something like a Tinker that you might want to jump on the Blink Dagger is the best way of closing the gap. But what ends up happening here is like you don't give up there's a Veil of Discord that's gone down on Tiny right now and Warlock ends up dropping his ult here in a couple of seconds with the fatal bonds coming in after it. Now Tiny ends up shadow blading and running away. This is the, literally the best utilization of his shadow blade all game. This is where the most value of this item has come from. So for the past four minutes or so there hasn't really been anything really important. Just a couple of little pickoffs happening but Drow ends up teleporting here and gets picked off. This is not really Tiny but when Tiny responds what they decide to do is run into Roshan and take it. Now Tiny does end up taking the ages off of this which ends up revolving into what's going to happen next. So now a couple of minutes after Roshan goes down Tiny is standing on mid and he's pretty much baiting here. His team are not necessarily that nearby and Lifestealer is showing top currently farming this wave. Now his allies are relatively close not super close but he ends up being get gone on here by the Void Spirit. Now you notice Drow moves forward, Lina moves forward and Maris they're all commissioning forward for this Tiny and we even have Warlock coming in closer as well. You look at this and this is almost like a perfect position here for Axe to blink call in on Drow. Now Axe isn't perfectly in position, he's actually waiting for Lifesteer to go on. But what's important here is that Life or that Warlock is just after using Fatal Bonds there on the Tiny. Now this Fatal Bonds is one of the best spells late game because it's percentage based damage and it's shared between all of the units so it's pretty much AOE uh, percentage damage and that's what's kind of uh, important and now Tiny is getting focused here. Now Axe waits until Tiny responds to go in and get a call. Now Axe almost got a 3 hero call but he only got Warlock here and Warlock does end up getting just his ulti off here next. Now Lysir managed to get here in, on time as well and join in. But as you see, Tiny doesn't really get off a huge amount of damage in this fight. He tosses in Axe, which is kind of a novelty toss there. But we end up seeing that Tiny doesn't really do that much this fight. But that tanking at the very start and how he made Warlock pretty much waste his like, ult there ended up pulling out to be really well like help towards this winning this fight. Now Drow has already bought back. This is a dieback. And we also have 
Void Spirit who buys back now and he's also going to die back here as well. So Tiny's bait that he had in front worked out incredibly well and in very good usage of ages. Now off of this they end up pushing high ground and they take the mid lane and they take the bottom lane of Rax. Now this isn't the game over yet. So if we have a look at the minimap on the top lane we can end up seeing the, like some of the heroes are showing and their three heroes show together at one point which is a really big indication that their enemy team are together on top lane they're gonna push as a group or something like that now Tiny didn't expect this and he ends up going defending this on his own and his allies are not nearby as a matter of fact his Skyret is dead right now and Lifestealer is also dead right now now Tiny ends up getting focused down here with the burst damage of Lina. He doesn't have any magic resist other than the Vambrace that he has, which is 10% magic resist. This ends up being a pretty bad start to a fight, but his teammates keep commissioning for it anyways. So now they're waiting around for Roshan and the enemy team is looking for Rosh as well. So the enemy is after actually smoking at this point. If we have a quick look here, they're smoked on the high ground up here. And Tiny is also smoked with his team. So they end up going in here and have a look at the crowd control. I want to focus on the crowd control here. The Maris uses his entire combo onto Tiny at this point and Tiny ends up getting focused for pretty much all that stuff but notice how his health didn't really go down. Now pretty soon afterwards they go and take another fight. Warlock did use his buyback here and this is a fight where they start going again. Now there's no Maris ultimate because it was commissioned last time and now Tiny gets focused here by a lot of different crowd control, literally Lina and Drow and Maraz all focusing him and he's literally not dying because he has so much armor at this point. And this ends up giving the open opportunity for the rest of the heroes on his team not to have them getting like using crowd control on them. So now Tiny teleports to the outpost and takes the bounty rune. He ends up finding Lina because of the shadow blade. So this ends up being somewhere where the shadow blade has turned out to be something really good and that's 500 gold now off of that tiny is after buying a bunch of mangoes and clarities so that he can fill back up on mana so he doesn't have to go back to the fountain you can do this when you have like a pretty good network on you right now and there isn't really an important item to get next as you see you got five mangoes two clarities so Tiny lost the ages last time they tried to push high ground and this time they're going high ground again with a very kind of similar fight. Tiny was pretty hard for them to kill but this time he has BKB and also a Havoc Hammer. This ends up being pretty straightforward for Tiny to kill the base. As you see Drow is like as if she's firing pebbles at Tiny. It doesn't even look like she's doing damage and that's pretty much the way that you want it to be when you're playing Tiny. And you end up seeing that this is a very convincing fight that they end up winning. The enemy buyback, they back off a little bit. He uses the cheese and just finishes off the base. And this ends up being pretty much the game over. So, so now we have Tiny going high ground here with his team. Which is a relatively similar time to what the previous Tiny was doing. And they do get pickoffs, which is kind of like the main difference here. And the Tiny ends up getting caught just at the end of this. Uh, as they're escaping. The Wyvern also dies here as well. And this does not really seem like too much. It's not worth a huge amount of gold, 450 for a kill there. But what ends up happening is that enemy team goes into Roshan. And this turns into their ages. Now they do kind of end up wasting the ages. But this is not ideal and it kind of slows down your own team for the pacing. With what you're going to do with the ages next. Because you have to wait around for the next Roshan. Now they kill the Slark with the Aegis and they're going down pushing high ground again regardless of the fact that there's no Roshan, there's no safety and kind of Tiny got picked off. Now also notice that Tiny does not have his AC finished and he doesn't have BKB either at this point. It might have been a good idea to invest in BKB instead of going to finish off and rushing for the AC as you end up seeing that Tiny dies here and they also have a Spirit Vessel so not so great. So straight after respawning Tiny literally just ran down mid again and he's going to finish off this Rax. Now they do use Glyph now and he ends up getting glimpsed here and gets pulled back and dies again. This is where BKB would have been really nice rather than going for this AC. So pretty much what's been happening for the past 5 minutes or so is Tiny realized that he needed BKB and literally just AFK farm for 5 minutes and his team waited around as well while he got the BKB. Now Tiny is holding on to his BKB here, he doesn't want to utilize it a little bit too early so he's just using whenever he can just to go and attack without the BKB and literally save the BKB for as late as he can. Now Slark is almost dead here and Disruptor ends up dying. Slark is really committing hard onto Shadow Fiend and dies but Tiny is pretty much in the back line 
pretty much right clicking everyone and this is pretty nice for them but now his BKB is after wearing off Slark buys back and also Night Stalkers so they pretty much go on Tiny here and they finish him off burn off his mana and he's also getting bashed there's not really much he can do about it so that might seem like a pretty bad debt, but as we see, this debt will end up being quite valuable, mainly because of the fact that it forced Slark to buy back. Now, straight off of this, the enemy decide to go into Roshan, they take Roshan, Tiny Ops, and not use his buyback. Mainly for the reason that Shadowfiend doesn't have his buyback or isn't alive yet for this fight. It's a pretty bad fight to take, pretty good idea not to buy back, because Shadowfiend's generally one of these heroes that's bad at buying backs, because he has to gain up souls and stuff. So Tiny runs in here to the front of the fight and Witch Doctor got picked off by the Winter Wyvern ult and now we have Tiny standing in the front. This is where Tiny just wants to get focused and Slark is trying to fight him here and Night Stalker is also getting focused and pretty much Tiny is tanking everything so Shadowfiend doesn't take the damage directly from Slark. Now unfortunately this ended up being a really bad fight for the enemy team that they were just not organized together. But as you'll see, when Slark dies here with the Aegis, the last one to die is Slark, which it, no one's here to help save Slark. Now Tiny ends up getting the kill, or like Shadowfiend got it, but this ends up being pretty much the reason why Slark is dead for two minutes is because he had to waste buyback to kill Tiny pushing high ground earlier. That's where that death was actually really valuable in turning in this into a victory. So as a conclusion to this, both tinies did roughly around the same amount of damage and the same tower damage, yet the first tiny, tiny A, ended up taking more incoming damage. So if you enjoyed this video, if you want to see more Dota content like this, make sure you subscribe.